All right, moving on to a, a game here in the West Coast. Uh, well, not necessarily the coast here, but we've got the Mavs and the Jazz in the Western Conference. The 4-5, 2-1, um, probably surprising to some, uh, not to Nate, who bet on this series before it even began uh, with the Mavs, knowing and not even knowing Luka would play, which is the situation we find ourselves in uh, right now where we don't know necessarily he's a game-time decision. Um, but <laughs> as, as you sort of mentioned to me earlier, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter if he does play at this point because they have uh, Jalen Michael Jordan Brunson on their team. Uh, and the man has gone completely ballistic. It feels like he's getting just as much credit as there is uh, blame being placed on Utah's inability to stop him. Um, and Rudy Gobert's really, really bad defensive rating for a three time defensive uh, player of the year. So, wh- where would he do? What do we do here in game four? Do the Jazz have any chutzpah? Are they going to come with anything and keep this uh, keep this thing close, or are we going to look at three one going back to Dallas? If they do, it's going to be because their offense is still cooking, uh, and it was in Game Three with Donovan Mitchell still being unstoppable, even if nobody else can really consistently get their own shot. Um, which is why I love the over again. I mean, we had this in Game One, Mavs to cover and over, and it flopped. It, let's be let's be real. I mean, yeah, Brunson and Dinwiddie scored. Nobody else could get anything going for Dallas, but then Jason Kidd, who we are continuing to apologize to, yes. Uh, made great adjustments. Maybe he just gave Ty Lou a call and said, "You know, wait. How do you uh, how do you take Rudy Gobert out of the game?" <laughs> and it's it's pretty simple. You just put him on a three point shooter where he can't leave, or uh, he'll get burned. And Maxi Kleba is that shooter. <clears throat> he is now twelve for sixteen from three in these last two games, causing Rudy to post a 124 defensive rating and a minus twenty six. And the weirdest stat line I've ever seen from the last game where he has a 211 offensive rating because he went six for six from the field for 15 points, but was a minus 16 in his 29 (laughs) minutes. So, I mean, he's almost unplayable if, if they're going to counter him in this way and everybody on Dallas can shoot. So it's not like you can hide him on any shooter and dare him to be dare them to beat you. So, I mean, Utah was a dreadful defensive team without Gobert when he was out for a couple weeks in February, they were a 120 defensive rating and Brunson is 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 just eating Mike Conley alive. Uh, love love Mike Conley, but he is a in the, in on the back nine here, and uh, with a ninety three offensive rating and a one twenty four defensive rating in his last two, he's getting completely underplayed by outplayed by a younger, stronger lefty uh, <clears throat> after his own heart. So, how do we bet this game, Josh? I mean, yeah. Mavs money line and over plus four four hundred. That's that's definitely worth a shot because I mean Utah, I I don't know they might lay down they they might just not have it they might not have it with the X's and O's this team then and the players starting to be like all right what everybody said is right they have to break us up this doesn't make sense uh, you can hedge that with with the spread with Dallas plus five because I do think Utah will will hold their own on offense and you still get plus two sixty or you can just hammer this Mavs team total at one hundred three. Mm. which we were a little hesitant to pull the trigger at 101 last game. Yeah. Uh, and they just, they cruised past that. I mean, yeah. it was, it wasn't even close. The jazz have now gone over in nine straight playoff games at home. So I think you like points here for sure. Based on the X's and O's we mentioned. And, uh, I, I think the Mavs are definitely have the advantage in terms of chess pieces right now. Yeah. hundred percent. Love that. This is still a two twelve. I was worried it was going to get up closer to two sixteen, two seventeen, even at this point. Um, we've got, uh, I feel like we've got a, a enough games at this, you know, two games in a row uh, of offense where in game one, the only reason uh, that that game, you know, stayed so, uh, so terrible in terms of uh, offensive output uh, was, was a couple of individual performances that just went so poorly. And, and really Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie both had terrible shooting games uh, in game one. Uh, Donnie Mitchell had two points at the half in game one, and this ended at a a 191 total, which um, isn't really close. It's not going to hit over in pretty much any line that uh, that gets set these days. Um, But that was that was a fluke is my point. I also like, you know, I'm looking at the fact that um, there's other things that could have gone right 
for uh, an over in the in games two and three that didn't, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie specifically being bad on offense, uh, being one of them uh, in both those games and just shooting uh, in, in game three there, we're looking at 28% from the field. Uh, and in game two, uh, where we're looking at the same pretty much about 28 or 29% from the field for him. Well, it closer, yeah, 29 and percent from the field, whatever point is, is he's just missing a ton of shots. Um, and, and a lot of, some of them are at the rim. A lot of them are from deep as he's gone now combined like two for 12 from deep in games two and three. And, and my point is, is Brunson's hot. He wasn't in game one. He, he wasn't two and three. Even if he's not in game four, you're still waiting on a game from Dimwitty that I believe is coming because I don't care. I don't believe in this Utah Jazz defense, wherever they are. Uh, so that's why they've gone over, you know, in nine straight. It's not just their offense, which uh, was at one point had 66 points uh, with four and a half minutes left in the third quarter last night. They ended the third quarter uh, in four and a half minutes, dropping 25 points, which is absurd for one team. So um, that's what Donnie does. He gets shot out of a cannon. And then all of a sudden, you know, if if anybody comes along with him, which Mike Connolly is not, God bless him. Like you said, he is he's on the back nine. He's probably on like 17. (laughs) So like, you know, especially just for the level of play that he's used to um, from someone who's who's as quality as he's been in his career. Sad to see, whatever. At this point, the over is really what we're talking about in any way, shape, or form you want to hit it. I, I really like going back to the well on either of these team totals. I say I feel more comfortable with Dallas's team total at this point. I don't think there's a letdown coming from them on offense. And, and really what was surprising for me in game one was, you know, we talked about how, the, how much they're, they're, how much faster they play with Dinwiddie uh, since, since he's gotten there without Luka. Right. And th- that pace goes up by about four possessions uh, per 100. And, and, and so, you know, you, you really like to continue to see that. And I, I, we'll continue to see that uh, in game four as well. It's not like Utah's game plan is predicated on stopping this team uh, and, and slowing it down. They're still going to be trying to get their points. In fact, probably speed it up and hope that they can figure out a way to, to game plan around Jalen Brunson, which is why, once again, I think there's no way that Quinn Snyder can consider even keeping his job if Jalen Brunson has more than 25. If he gets 30 again, dude, like, I don't, it's no knock on Jalen. It's just you've got to game plan for him at this point, um, which leads me to feel good about some Spencer Dinwiddie props if you wanted to go that route. Yeah, you can game plan for him. I don't know if they have the personnel to to stop him. Well, I'm just um, saying he's he's one on one at the top of the key every time, and then yeah. he gets into the lane, and then the double comes. And I'm like, you're doubling him when he's already past his first man. What's the point of that? Like for sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, Quinn Snyder as job security, I think Fair. To, to to just put that. But I mean, he does have some tough decisions. It's like, what side of history are you going to be on here? Uh, are you going to go one game too late, putting Eric, Eric Pascal at the, the five and just saying, we're going to outscore this team because they don't have Doncic. Uh, or are you going to continue to stand by Rudy Gobert and put him out there and, and get screwed? Uh, and Jason Kidd taking subtle jabs at him in the post game where he just threw in a long answer like, oh, yeah, they, they got the ball to their playmaker, Rudy Gobert, a couple times. Uh <laughs> Just Good yeah, they, <laughs> the game is passing is passing them by. If you're a big center who can't put it on the floor, who can't make make the other team pay for going yeah. small against you, uh, I mean, he had a few lobs again, two eleven offensive rating for those six made field goals, but couldn't stay on the floor. So we're gonna look at some unders with him as well, uh, I'm sure. And yeah, Definitely. if you want the series, it's interesting now that the, one of the most likely outcomes for FanDuel is Mavs in five to just win these next two. Yeah. I would take Mavs in six at plus 360 if you missed the boat here on betting them pre-series. I wish I bet them after game one again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're now minus 230 to, to wrap this up because people think Utah is already looking at the offseason. season. 